TV. And I am joined this afternoon right now by Derek Oslikson. I hope I got that got right, it. Derek. Excellent, nailed it. And uh, Derek is with Apero. And if you've got a new product that's come out, interfaces with one of the old products, and it's all about ADSB and connectivity in the cockpit. That's right. Yeah, the new product is called Stratus ESG. It's a 1090 ES transponder with built-in WAS GPS. So it's kind of an all-in-one solution targeted directly at the legacy and non-glass panel aircraft. So your old, you know, 1960 Moonies and 172s and those guys that don't already have a WAS GPS position source built in. And this is the product for them. So how does it work? Uh, it's, it's pretty basic. It's a transponder. Um, from the front end, uh, you'll see that if if I can okay. kind of point yeah, to that. You, you can it's have a, your brochure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, first thing you'll notice is it's a panel-mounted transponder, which right. is unique compared to a lot of the other ADSB out solutions that you're seeing today. They're UATs, they're remote-mounted boxes that reuse the existing transponder. And our thought was, if you're going to pay to upgrade to you know your new avionics, it should look and feel like an upgrade. Mm -hmm. And this gives you that. You take out that old analog transponder and you right. place it with a new digital looking transponder. That's kind of exciting for a lot of people. Um, so that was really important to us. Additionally, um, the data that that this collects, so this is ADSB out. ADSB in today is done a lot by you know Stratus. It's a right. portable ADSB receiver. But there are some compromises with a product like this. Um, it's got internal ADSB and GPS antennas and it's battery powered. So most people will put this up on a dash or on a side window, and it has to be positioned in the aircraft where it can see the ground for the ground stations and the sky for the GPS satellites, which is kind of awkward. And when you're only receiving, you don't get a full traffic picture. Okay. By connecting a Stratus ESG to a Stratus 2, you really take away all of those compromises and you get the full ADSB in experience on an iPad. Mm -hmm. So our other theory when we went to design this was that everybody who has to comply with this mandate should be able to enjoy the full benefits of ADSB in, mm -hmm. whether that's on an iPad or on a, on a glass panel. So that's what this allows you to do. You connect it, you get power, and you also get the benefit of the externally mounted antennas that are feeding the transponder. So now you can put, instead of positioning your Stratus you know, on the side of the aircraft or trying to look out a window, it doesn't matter where you put it. You can tuck it away to, to a spot that you'll probably never see it again. When you talk about the equipage and, and the 2020 mandate, where does this stand in kind of the spectrum of the solutions that are available? Uh, on price are you talking? Price and, and, and mm -hmm. usability. Yeah, so this is this is unique. There are very few products like this on the market, um, especially at this price point. This is about half the price of the, the closest competitor. That mm -hmm. is a panel mount 1090 with a GPS built into it. Uh, the, the price for this unit is $3,490, and that includes the GPS antenna, so there's no asterisks in the price. There's nothing extra that the customer is going to have to buy. Um, and then installation on a panel mount roughly is probably around half of what a UAT is, especially in these smaller aircraft, because they don't have avionics bays like a larger aircraft would have, so a lot of times they have to run it to the back of the aircraft and run cables and wires, and it takes a lot longer. You build structure for it and all that stuff. So um, regarding the price, you know, there, recently we've heard of some new announcements of UATs as low as $2,000 that includes everything in the kit, which is a great price. Um, ours is 3490 so the hardware cost is a little bit higher than that, but the important thing to consider is installation cost, total installed cost mm -hmm. of these solutions. And this, based on what we're hearing from avionics shops that we've talked to, is very, very competitive, if not less expensive in some cases. I mean, it, it won't be always less expensive. In some cases, that will be less expensive, but this... Now, you said the ADA, ADSB in portion is displayed on an iPad. Is that a proprietary system to Apero, or is it uh, something that's a third-party application? That's on ForeFlight, actually. Okay. So the Stratus portable ADSB receiver was built under a joint venture between Apario, ForeFlight, and Sporties. Mm -hmm. So that is exclusive between Stratus and ForeFlight. And so you're, it, it shows displays traffic, weather, all of that on your iPad? On, on the, the iPad, yeah. On yep. the flight app. Correct. And we wanted to do that because, like I said, the, the legacy aircraft that we're targeting for this 
most of them don't have a glass panel to display it on and mm -hmm. frankly the airframes aren't worth enough to invest the money to do that on so they want to do it on an iPad but they don't want to, they don't want compromises on the data that they're going to see Talk to us a little bit about how your company is viewing the 2020 mandate. There are, as we learned this morning at the opening session, uh, still just, what is it, 1,100 days uh, and yeah. some odd days 56 before. 56 weeks or something. 56 weeks before this mandate kicks weeks. in. And literally hundreds of thousands of airplanes that need to be, that, that need to be brought up to code, if you will, on right. ADS-B up. How does the company work with the mm -hmm not only at supply chain, but getting pilots involved and saying, this is something that you're going to have to do if you want to operate in the, in the, the, the airspace system, and this is a good solution for you. Yeah, it's, you know, that's industry-wide. That's going to be a big problem, and naturally people are going to wait until the last minute to try to equip, and there's going to be a huge, you know, glut of, of demand for these limited number of shops. So it's something that we're, we're trying to help, and, we're hoping that given the fact that this is a panel mount, it takes less time mm -hmm. to install. That equates to greater volume and greater capacity in the repair stations. So that'll help, but yeah, it, it is going to be a problem. What are you estimating on the install time, on the, the airplane on the ground time? Uh, it's, it's really hard for me to install not being installer. We've heard right. an, an average of about 16 hours installation, but that's, you know, again, that's... Uh, yeah, so basically somebody's airplane likely in and out of the shop in a couple of days. Yeah, yep. So every aircraft is different, of course. Right. Not, especially the older they get, you know, you, you open up the panel, one could be completely different. The same make, model, and year of aircraft is mm -hmm. most likely going to be different. So install time is going to vary. You showed me something inside that brochure, and we can, we can look at this a little bit, that kind of really explains mm -hmm. how this works in, in, a, in a graphic way. And I'll, I'll hold this up, and if you can just kind of talk us through this installation a little bit and, and let us know what a pilot can expect, a, an operator can expect when they when they go with the system. Okay, so in the middle you can see the Stratus ESG, that's your transponder, that's your ADS-B out. Mm -hmm. And you can see that interfaces with the external, the GPS antenna and the ADS-B antenna. Those are installed on the outside of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, that information, this this alone can, that that's ADS-B out, think of it right. that way. Stratus is ADS-B in, so Stratus to an iPad, that, like we were talking about earlier, gives weather and some traffic, but when you connect it to the, the Stratus ESG, it takes away all of those compromises. It's now using the externally mounted antennas, it's getting its power from the transponder, and since you're now complying with the 2020 mandate, you're participating in the airspace, mm -hmm. um, you're going to get the full traffic picture. And I think... You know, we, we introduced the first Stratus about three years ago, mm -hmm. and we've since then done a lot of education on what people aren't actually seeing for traffic, because it's not like the FISB data is broadcast to anybody who's listening. Right. TISB is not that way, and sometimes you see traffic, sometimes you don't. And I, I'm hopeful that a lot of that education that we've done in the past three years will actually incent people to install earlier, because now they're people understand it and they know they want the full traffic picture. Mm -hmm. So that's an incentive to equip earlier than 2020. Now you can get a full traffic picture on your iPad. Now, the unit is not yet available. What's what's kind of the timeline you think for having this being able to be installed? Well, we we don't have an exact date. We plan to submit for the TSO approval at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So up after that, it's kind of up to the FAA. And we've been working with the FAA trying to avoid any surprises that you right. know, we don't want to see anything get put back and have to fix X, Y, and Z problems. We're hoping to submit you know, a good quality package. In the interim, are you working with pilots to have them go fly with a system that will that will give them an opportunity to see what the advantages are just of having the traffic and weather in the cockpit. I know from my experience, and I came back into it, uh, when I learned to fly, there there was none of that. Storm scope was just the big yeah. thing. And I came back and I looked at a system and suddenly I could see the weather in the cockpit, the traffic in the cockpit, all of those things. And it would seem to me that that would be a way to get people really interested in seeing mm -hmm. what they're missing, not having that in the cockpit. Yeah, and in fact, we've kind of done that with Stratus being out mm -hmm. early. You know, they, they can see that now, and there's many, many people flying around with just a Stratus and, a, and an iPad. So mm -hmm. like I was saying, they, they see what they can get and the true potential of it, 
And this edition not only checks the box for 2020, but it opens up the rest of you know all of ADSBN and the power that it is. And it's pretty impressive what do you actually get. If we backed up 15 years ago and I told you for this kind of investment in a you know an old Mooney or something, you could have glass displays. Now, granted, that glass display is a, a, an iPad, right. but you could have subscription-free graphical weather, text weather, all the Fisbee products, and all that traffic. That's pretty powerful stuff. So, can you look down the road and see what's coming, or is, is everything focused on the ADSB mandate? Right now, we're really focused on the ADSB mandate, but you know, this, this product is going to be distributed through a dealer network. Right. And we're, we're growing that today. We're accepting applications mm -hmm. and trying to get out there. And um, of course, once that's established, we want to continue to feed it new and innovative products. Well, Derek Oselkson, uh, thank you very much for coming and talking with us for a few minutes here on Aero TV. Very interesting product, and I uh, wish you all the best here at AEA and going forward with uh, getting them installed in airplanes. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. Aero News Network's coverage of the 58th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Now certified, Aspen Avionics Single Band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Avidyne provides innovative avionics solutions for general aviation aircraft, including the IFD-540 and IFD-440 FMS GPS NAVCOMs with geofill, hybrid touch, and full ADS-B capability. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, NAVCOM, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. The IntelliFlight 2100 Digital Flight Control System is the perfect complement to today's integrated flight decks and is certified on the King Air and Conquest. It will now interface to a single EFIS and a mid-continent SAM 302 unit for a low-cost, complete panel upgrade. Contact us at www.genesis-aerosystems.com. Interactive Links application is available in the Apple and Android app stores. This free app is a virtual simulation of the Lynx NGT9000 touchscreen cockpit display that lets pilots interact with the unit as if they had a real system in their hands. The app covers the entire Lynx family of ADS-B products, including features and options to help customers decide which Lynx model is right for their needs. The TI-250 DC to AC inverter pumps out 250 watts of clean, regulated AC cabin or cockpit power. It's perfect for laptops, iPads, tablets, chargers, and special missions equipment. Available from your local avionics dealer. NAVWORKS makes ADS-B affordable. Certified or experimental, NAVWORKS gives you high-quality next-gen avionics solutions that dramatically increase your situational awareness. Check us out now on the web at www.navworks.com. The debate is no longer about upgrading GA aircraft with next-gen. It's about financing it. The next-gen GA fund is about doing just that. Find out more at www.nextgenfund.com.